Tim Burton created an instant classic when he made Nightmare Before Christmas. This is a movie that has been loved by anyone who has seen it, and has set a major standard for what is considered to be a good Halloween movie. The film follows Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King of Halloween Town. He is loved by as many who fear him, but sadly, we find out early on that he has become quite bored of doing the same thing year after year. But everything changes for Jack when he stumbles upon a door to Christmas Land, where he gets the idea to take Santa out of the equation and make Christmas his own that year. The movie follows Jack as he learns that even the best laid plans can go wrong. Throughout the film, we got to meet tons of great characters, each with their own peculiarities that make them different from the last. We got to meet the anxious mayor, who seems to be constantly worried about the next Halloween, and we also got to meet Dr. Finkelstein, the mad scientist who plays a hand in helping Jack take to the skies in a skeletal reindeer-powered sleigh. But one character that gave an impression almost as big as Jack's was the vile Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie was the antagonist of the film and the purest form of evil in Halloween Town. He could be found on the outskirts of town, though no one in their right mind would try to interact with him. The only three people that seemed to be able to survive his sinister ways were his three henchmen, Locke, Shock, and Beryl, who seemed to do anything that he asked of them. Now, with the movie being as popular as it is, it shouldn't be too surprising to find out that there are a ton of fan theories about each character and who they developed into. One of the most interesting theories being about Oogie Boogie. Some theories talk about how each character in the film is meant to represent some of our most basic fears, while others theorize about how each of these characters came to be and even how they may have died in their past lives. But what's even cooler is how a lot of these theories end up intertwining and working really well together, and they end up helping you see a bigger picture that may have helped some fans figure out Oogie Boogie's true identity. The more we look at it, the more obvious it is that many of the Halloween Town residents may represent spooky themes or aspects of Halloween. But when it comes down to Oogie Boogie, the theories about him seem to prove that he is the purest form of evil in the town. And when you look closer, you can see that everything that makes up his character could only fit the build of a very specific type of individual. Now, what would that be? The answer, when you really think about it, is an obvious one in The Nightmare Before Christmas. The villainous Oogie Boogie was more than likely a serial killer in his past life. Now, they never mention this in the film. However, when you hear the facts, you may end up as convinced as we are that Oogie's origins are very dark and his henchmen aren't who they seem. The theory, as far as we can tell, all developed through Reddit, where a user began to explain their idea as to who Oogie was before becoming an evil outcast of Halloween Town. The idea is based on the fact that most of the citizens of Halloween Town aren't inherently evil. Sure, they look like spooky things and are all about Halloween, but none of them are particularly mean or even rude to one another. They just live their lives a bit differently from humans. In the opening song of the movie, a group of characters even sing the line, that's our job, but we're not mean, in our town of Halloween. However, the one exception to this rule, of course, is the town's boogeyman. Oogie Boogie, from the very minute we hear about him, comes off as this being that scares even the monsters of Halloween Town. Another thing worth pointing out is that Halloween Town, while lacking in evil beings, also seems to be lacking in children. In the entirety of the movie, there only appears to ever be a total of six kids, most of which appear to not have any parental figures. So the theorist asks a simple question, what if Oogie ate the rest of the children in the town? I mean, think about how much this makes sense. As we said, there are virtually no children in Halloween Town, aside from a few, three of which are actually Oogie's henchmen, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Now, if you're like most people, you've probably wondered why the trio was so faithful to Oogie Boogie. Well, it looks like the answer might actually coincide with this theory. If the Redditor is correct, then the reason the three kids are so loyal to their evil master is that they are under the threat of death. He had already eaten most of the other children in the town, and the only way to keep themselves off the menu would be to continue doing his bidding, no questions asked. The theory even goes on to talk about the possibility that Oogie Boogie actually ate Lock, Shock, and Barrel's parents, which would only further serve to keep them in line. And to make matters worse, there is even the idea floating around that they each witnessed the death of their parents, which would explain why they all act so wonky and insane. The constant fear of being killed and eaten, especially after witnessing the death of one's parents, would be enough to drive anyone to the breaking point. So when all was said and done, it was easy for Oogie to get them to do what he wanted, which, according to the theory, involved them gathering up the children to bring to him so that he could eat. However, he was eventually caught by the town, which is why he was forced to live on the outskirts, and he slowly turned into the 
the town boogeyman. Now we have spoken a bit in an earlier video about how each character was possibly designed in a way to give clues as to who they were and how they may have died in their past life before becoming residents of Halloween Town. Well, if the characters and their designs do contain hints as to who they were, that plus all this evidence has led the Redditor as well as all of us fans who have seen the thread and agree with this theory to believe that in his past life, Oogie Boogie was a serial killer and his evil ways likely passed on to his supernatural Halloween Town form. But hang on, it goes even deeper than that. Have you ever noticed how each character in The Nightmare Before Christmas seems to represent a fear that can be found in a lot of people? For instance, when you take a look at the mayor, the first thing that most people notice is his persona. He comes off as quite a nervous guy who is literally two-faced. Well, whether we would like to admit it or not, most of us have this inner voice that is in a constant state of fear that those we love and trust are going to change or do something behind our backs. The mayor also depicts a state of social anxiety, which is something that almost everybody suffers from to some extent. Or we can take a look at Dr. Finkelstein, the mad scientist with the body that, at this point, was mostly made up of artificial parts. Throughout the film, we saw him meandering a bit in his wheelchair around town, but only when he had something to do. For the most part, Finkelstein kept to himself and remained mostly isolated, aside from the exception of Sally, who he took care of. Many people believe that Finkelstein represents the fear that we all have of aging and being unable to function without help from others or machines. Now let's talk about Oogie Boogie, who is obviously meant to be the boogeyman of the movie, but there is so much more to it than just that. The Boogeyman is an old tale that has been passed down from culture to culture and has many different variations, but it's essentially the concept of fear wrapped up into one single being. That's why we saw that Oogie was filled with all things creepy and crawly, like spiders and snakes. He was literally full of fear. He also mentioned that he is the shadow of the moon at night, filling your dreams to the brim with fright. And a lot of fans have taken this to mean that Boogie represents another fear that we all have to some capacity, the fear of the dark and unknown. He was the literal embodiment of evil in Halloween Town. Now, do you know what xenophobia is? Xenophobia is the fear of the unknown, and it is the fear of being afraid. Most people would think that the biggest thing that a serial killer would thrive on would be their victim's fear of dying, but that's not the case. To the killer, the victim's death is inevitable. What they really get their kicks from is that the fact that their victim has no idea what is going on, meaning the victims don't have any control over the situation and have no idea what is about to happen to them or how long things are going to take. They are just afraid with no general idea of what they are afraid of, that's why Ogi liked to toy with his victims when he got his hands on them. He liked to see the fear in their eyes. Now, this is a lot of people wondering, why was Jack the king of Halloween Town instead of Oogie Boogie if Oogie was a serial killer? Well, as mentioned before, the residents of Halloween Town aren't necessarily evil. In fact, they all seemed rather helpful and kind toward one another, and very supportive of Jack in whatever decisions he made. So, if the townsfolk were able to decide who they would appoint as the king of Halloween Town, it would make sense that they would choose the being that they all trusted rather than the one that they feared terribly. And if you're still not convinced that Oogie is a serial killer, while he was alive, you're in luck. This rabbit hole goes even deeper. As you may have heard, and we spoke a bit about in an earlier video, there is a theory floating around that goes how each of these characters in The Nightmare Before Christmas may have died. If you take a look at how most fans believe Oogie died, it actually ends up supporting this serial killer conspiracy theory a little too well. Now, if you're not familiar with this theory, basically each character's physical clues gives hints to the manners of their death. Take Locke. For example, many fans suspect that he was frozen to death on account of his pale face and light blue lips. Both are indications of hypothermia or death by freezing. Another more obvious example would be Sally. Based on her design, many people believe it is safe to assume that she was dismembered before she died, and that's why she was sewn back together. As for Oogie Boogie, a lot of clues as to how he died were taken from the way his character was designed. He is essentially a burlap sack filled with creepy crawlies and sewn shut. If you know anything about the decomposition process, you'll know that a lot of natural decomposition will occur because of tiny insects that tend to swarm the dead and feed off the body. They are essentially nature's cleaner. So a lot of people have come to the conclusion that when Oogie died, his body was likely skinned and then left in the ground hence the burlap sack instead of actual skin. And upon being left in the ground, he became a feast for its inhabitants. Many fans even think that the bugs and snake inside of his burlap body may have been the ones that devoured him in the first place. So what does this have to do with how he was a serial killer? Well, what if the way that Oogie died was less justified than you think? Odds are when you think of a serial killer dying, you assume the death penalty or something of the sort. 
What if that wasn't the way that he died, and instead, it was more gruesome? What if he fell victim to someone seeking vengeance, or a mob of people who knew what he was doing? We think Oogie may have had a much darker process to his killings than we might have imagined. The way we see it is that in his past life, Oogie Boogie would get a hold of his victims, skin them, and possibly even eat them. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer existed, right? But he could only get away with it for so long, and in the end, he ended up being discovered and turned into a victim himself. Someone made him feel what he had done to countless others, and they skinned him alive before burying him for good. Extremely unsettling, to say the least. I swear, some of these theories just keep going deeper and deeper the more that you dig. What do you guys think, though? Was Oogie Boogie a serial killer in his past life? And if so, did you happen to catch any clues that we or the Redditor may have missed? If so, be sure to let us know in the comments. As for right now, that's all Disney fans. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments, and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.